Hi, we are going to talk about spectrophotometry and absorbance. Now there is an outflow of this, it's called the Beer-Lambert plot, and I have that in a separate video. So if you want, you can watch that video after this. This gives you the foundation of the theory and the background um, behind spectrophotometry. So here's the idea. You can pass light through a substance and that substance will absorb some of the light. Not all of the light will pass through the substance. Okay, that's the basic principle of it. Um, so what I've drawn here is a cuvette. Um, and we have a bluish purple solution inside of that cuvette. Well, we're going to shoot light through that. That would be the incident light. Um, and as this light goes through, these particles, the concentration, okay, these particles are going to absorb some of that light. Now, not all the light will be absorbed and some of the light will actually pass through the cuvette and um, that I just labeled as P. Now, the amount of light that goes through that cuvette is definitely going to be less right here than the amount of light that we put into it. And in spectrophotometry, um, the machine knows exactly the amount of light that it shoots through and it can detect the amount of light that uh, comes out on the other side. So that we call transmittance, and you can do the log of a fraction of this, which is transmittance, da da da. You don't need to know all of that stuff. We sum this all up in one word, absorbance. The amount of light that is absorbed by, um, by that solution right there. Now I'd like to show you, I have an example. Here is a cuvette, okay, there's a cuvette. And inside of here is a solution. Um, we would shoot light this way because there is copper sulfate inside of here. Uh, that copper sulfate is going to absorb some of the light and less light will come out on this side. So we will know the absorbance, the amount of light that's absorbed as that light goes through, as we shoot light through it. Uh, now there's a formula for this. Here it is. A stands for absorbance. Let me write this down for you. So that's our absorbance. And the absorbance equals, okay, I'm giving you two formulas. This is what you'd see on an AP reference sheet. This is what I believe that you would see in a college classroom. Um, epsilon times length times concentration. This is the same thing, A, B, C. A is the same thing as epsilon. B is the same thing as length. C is the same thing as concentration. Now this epsilon, the epsilon, that A right there, is called molar absorptivity. Now, every solution has its own unique ability to absorb light, and that's the molar absorptivity. Um, so if I am doing um, a lab, I have right here, notice four of those. Can you see all four of those? You guys, this is from last year. I kept those just to show the gradient of the colors. This is most concentrated, clearly going down to the least concentrated, darkest blue, because I have the highest concentration, the most moles per liter um, for this copper two sulfate right there. Um, so I'm using all copper two sulfate. Uh, that means for this experiment, the molar absorptivity is the same for all of these because it's the same compound, it's the same compound. So if I was to do like um, an iron two thiocyanate, that would have a different molar absorptivity because it's a different compound. Every compound has its own molar absorptivity. Length, length is simply the length of the cuvette. So this is a centimeter. This is going to be a centimeter length. And that's pretty standard, okay? That cuvettes are pretty standardized. That is the distance that the light travels through. And that's going to be the distance of the cuvette. Uh, and then concentration. So again, this is from the one to the four, hugely different concentration. Predict which one is going to have the greatest absorbance. Which one of those will absorb the most light? Is clearly the one with the highest concentration because there is more uh, compounds in there. There is a higher amount of uh, copper sulfate in there to absorb the light. So this would have a high absorbance, that would have a low absorbance. The light's going to, more light will pass through that because there's less compounds to absorb the light. Um, so concentration. Now, this is important. When you're doing an experiment, you're going to be testing the same compound and using the same cuvettes. That means the molar absorptivity, the length, so your A and B, those are constant. Those are going to be constant, which means absorbance is going to be directly proportional to concentration. 
So the greater the absorbance, the greater concent um, concentration and vice versa, which means you can do this easy, easy. If you have simply three points, let's say that you have absorbance one and absorbance two, okay? So let's take these two. I put these into my, it'd be a spectrophotometer or I have a colorimeter is what it's called. They're the cheap kind for high school. Um, I put these individually, get an absorbance, put that in, get an absorbance, two absorbance. If I know one of the concentrations, you can simply solve for the second concentration. It's linear. They're directly proportional to one another. Uh, so this right here is a huge trick and time save. You don't even have to know the more objectivity or the length of the cuvette to figure out concentration or to figure out absorbance. You can simply have two points. Have two points, know the absorbance and the concentration of at least one, and you can find the other concentration. And that's actually what we're trying to do usually is determine an unknown concentration. All right, so there you have it, spectrophotometry and absorbance. Watch the next video if you need help with calibration curves, Beer-Lambert plots. All right, good job, thanks.